Hello everybody and welcome back to another vlog and update with the family. So today we concluded the last episode of the chicken coop build and that'll be called the big move. So that should be posted actually before this. So uh, hopefully you guys have a chance to uh, check that out. But we do have some other updates. We haven't posted any updates since we got our chickens and set up the brooder. So we'll be having a look at the chickens. But, uh, you know, since the big move is already posted before this, we can kind of give you a little behind the scenes look. And we'll start heading down that way. So between the weather and work and black flies and all kinds of other stuff it was definitely a trying time getting things ready to do the move but everything fell in place today and uh, as you'll see with the big move video we had a little bit of help from a backhoe so that turned out well. That sped things along by at least a day and saved me my back, I'm sure. So I'm just going to turn around and there you go. There is the chicken coop in its final place. There's a little bit of wind today so you may end up getting some sound knocked out here chicken coop is in place so we're gonna go over and we'll show you the garden so if you recall we have strawberries and lettuce growing as well as some onions so let's have a look at the onions first so these are the fish tub onions that we planted and they're doing quite well. Their stocks are getting nice and long. And we actually have a second tub of those. And these are doing wonderfully as well. Now up to the big raised bed. You'll, you should be able to notice a big difference in these. Oh. Excellent growth going on here. We had a few issues with cutworms. So there's supposed to be a lettuce right here. But that one was eaten. That one was eaten. And so that was this too. one. So we planted a different lettuce yeah, here. We and had a replacement lettuce there. And there was another one that a grub ate, which grew back. So this one's the one that a grub ate and it grew back. Yeah, it was a cutworm. So mm -hmm. we left a root in for that one. We left the root in, but we did dig down enough to find the cutworm and got rid of him before he could finish the deed. And the strawberries are doing awesome. I'd say we're actually going to get to the point where we have to look out for runners at this point. They're almost mature enough to be sending out some runners. Mm -hmm. And also, they're doing very good. Like, they're Mom. super big. Like, look at that. Mom. Look at that. Yeah. Look how big Mom. those are. And we're also getting okay. flowers on them. Those are flowers right there, but they never bloom yet. Yeah, so one thing we're doing with these, the flowers, we've been picking those off, because um, that would be the first harvest, and we want to pick the flowers from the first harvest so that they can put more energy into making roots. Uh -huh. they do. Now this one seems like maybe something cut them off or got yeah. at them. It kind of looks like a cutworm made it. Yeah. Like, but there's like a little area right here that's kind of going slightly up. Yeah, we might so. have to dig down there to see if we find any cutworm. Yeah, we might need to try to find one. And over here we have a, a very good plant working here. There's, a, there's some little stalks here, and mm -hmm. very nice little flowers here. I use this garbage. Oh, they're also awesome. Alright, so for this corner strawberry now, we're going to dig down and see if we can see any cutworms. Cutworm. 
But please, there's one here so I can get it. Just move back so the light shines in, sweetheart. Okay. I got dirty. So not seeing any obvious ones yet. Uh -uh. They, they do go down pretty deep. We are digging as deep as possible. Who knows, there might be a cutworm right at the mud, the bottom of this um, Mother's Day garden box, but there might not be. These just dig down very low. We want me to go bye bye. We want me to go bye bye. Try not to disturb the roots too much. Uh uh, we don't want to do that. The roots are the most important part because if the roots come out, it won't grow back. That's right. That's right. Same as this one, we never took the roots out and it grew back. That's right. My dad's still digging down there and we do not. Find a cutworm yet? Nothing so far. Hopefully, we do find one because if we don't, um, that cutworm will keep eating and maybe get to the roots. So. Maybe. Yeah. You know, sometimes if the roots aren't set too much. We can uproot it. Do that because we got lots of root. Hey. Guys, do not do that at home. Do not try that at home, please. Okay. That's what daddy had to do with the lettuce before. You might really need to, but it's better to not do that. Well, you could break the roots. Yeah, that's why daddy dug around, made sure to have a nice ball of root. By the way, that plant looks healthy and perfect. So far, we never found any cutworms. So far, no cutworm. Hopefully we find one though. It would be good to explain the damage, but possible that we don't as well. My god. Dead. Oh, and here we go. Look at this. Right in here. Inside the root. Is trying it? to hide from me. Is it? It's a little cutworm. There he is. Ew. It's a little grub. Mm. Well, he is a cutworm too. Let's see. I yeah. saw that way. So there's your cutworm hiding right down in the root. He's moving. I saw that way. So, you know, by risking the plant, digging it up is one thing. Um, but as you can see on the plant here, we're looking at one, two, maybe more stalks after been eaten by this guy. And he was obviously sticking around in the root to continue doing more damage. So I'll have one more quick look to make sure he doesn't have a friend, but lately we've been finding they're just coming by themselves, one to a plant when it starts getting damaged. He is so disgusting. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll dig a nice hole back here again. He is so disgusting. Big hole, because you need no. to fit all the root. I'll fit the plant back in here. Hey. Hey. So guys, as you can see, he is moving. See, used to be right here, but now he's right here. So we'll get this replanted. Oh, I know. And hopefully this will continue to take root again and recover. Mm -hmm. Ew, he's squishy. Pretty much with it, when you got a, a cutworm yeah. like that down in the root, that's pretty much a death, a death sentence for the plant. So it was kind of do or die as far as digging yeah, up the plant and finding him. him in there. But that's the... That's the pattern we've been having, is one cut worm to one plant and doing big amounts of damage.
So guys, so, I'm gonna hold them real quick. And right now, Daddy's it. gonna show how we fix cutworms. Throw them on the ground. We found a worm. And you put them in the dirt where they belong. Hang them. All right, so that's gonna conclude our review of the garden. Next, we'll show you guys how the chickens are doing. All right, so one other thing before we go and see the chickens. Um, one thing that my daughter planted that has done very well since we've been living here without any maintenance whatsoever is our patch of rhubarb. I planted it myself. That's right. She planted it and it's all grown up. And it's already had a couple of harvests out of it. And uh, Nanny's after coming and getting some. So we're not real big users of rhubarb. But now that we have the strawberries planted, we should be able to make some nice strawberry rhubarb jam once everything is all matured up. Yummy. All right, so we'll probably take some of this rhubarb and uh, chop it up and freeze it to have it ready for when we get our strawberries in the fall. And I also, we, um, we picked this one off of our lettuce plant. I found a piece of lettuce. That's right. We had a little bit of a yellowing at the end of the leaves uh, down close to the ground. So we picked that. We're going to go in and just rinse it. and uh, Make a, the tiniest Caesar salad ever with it. Make the tiniest Caesar salad ever. That's right. So that's our rhubarb patch. This is something that we don't even need to try. And uh, it comes up every year. So we'll get some of that later. So also, on the way to the house, I've seen on a couple of other homesteader channels that uh, they like the flower. I've heard some, some people call it a lupine, but here where we are from, we just call them lupins. And they are a weed <laughs> to us. These things grow everywhere. Almost every ditch along the side of the road is full of lupins. So for those who love them and are trying to get them growing in their gardens and all that good stuff, you can come and have some of mine. Mm -hmm. Alright, we got, we got a whole lot of them. We do not need them anymore. <laughs> Alright, so let's try to get to those chickens now. All right, we'll, uh, there's always something. Where you bumble. got a bumblebee? Let's see. Look, right there is a bumblebee. Where? Right there on that plant. Oh, look at that. That is a bumblebee and it's trying to escape. Oh, he's collecting nectar. I am so glad we came over here to see that little bumblebee. And he's got a nice yellow color to him. So he's probably just a little peaceful honeybee. And he got his pollen sacks on his legs. Very orangey looking pollen. He is actually kind of cute. He's, okay. he's a busy bee, literally. Um, his eyes look kind of look like Pokemon eyes. Do so they look like Pokemon eyes? Yeah. Yeah. My God. He's busy. He's busy, busy, busy. He's very busy collecting that stuff. Ah! So yeah, we we mow our grass and we get rid of a lot of clover flower, but there's uh, definitely still lots of lupins for these guys to get their their pollen. And then we got a different type of bumblebee here. So we have two types of bumblebees. That one that's furry and that one right there over on that one. That's the one that we saw mm -hmm. later. Oh my god. Who knows, we might run another bumblebee. Ah! You never know, we might see more. These are very busy. Alright, so he's gone to the back. So maybe we'll find another one. If we do, we'll try to update you guys on that. But there you go. If you we'll couldn't hear, she good. said, we'll try and find some more, and if we do, we'll update you on that. 
But this is our lupins or lupines. I'm not judging how anyone says it. Both are correct as far as I'm concerned. And we got lots and lots and lots. All right, so we'll finish off there with the lupins. All right, so if you guys remember the brooder that we set up, I've since put a lid on it because these guys are getting pretty big and they started hopping out. That's right, so we got the kiddos here and we got the, the brooder ready to take the top off and I got a feeling there's going to be some excited chickens in there. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. There we go. Oh no. Oh no, no. So you should oh, handle no, them by no. doing this with your fingers and I'm scooping not... under their bellies. Well, that's right, you scoop under their bellies. You don't grab them by the wings or anything. Oh, we have another one. We got Peppy up. All right, so this one is Becky. And Becky's after getting quite large compared to when these were in a shoebox. Jump, jump, jump. Jump, 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 jump. Becky. So these are feathering out. There we go. So they got their flight feathers. They're able to hop from the inside of the box up onto the uh, the edge of it. And they're eating, drinking, pooping machines. And we're pretty much getting to the end of using the uh, mother hen brooder heater and we'll start hardening these guys off and they'll be ready to go out into the coop now that we have the coop in place. On the right. So I got right here we have Mario it looks like and he has got in very many feathers since um, we had him in the shoe box, like a lot of feathers. So we can tell I'm um, Becky and Mario apart because Becky has a little dot on her head, but this one does not have a dot on his head. But it kind of does, but it's lighter. And yeah. So that is Mario. There we go, and this one is Donkey Khan. Bring him over here a little bit. There he is. Back a little bit, show him There we go, this is Donkey Khan. Donkey Khan is getting big. He's got the smallest wings of all four. So he doesn't jump as high as the other ones just yet. I'll stand on Daddy's hand. Yeah. Or do you want to sit down? So here, this is Pecky. Um, another sex link out. <laughs> the talons are sharp. You're and up um, if you want to see what it looks like if you have a bare arm, you can see scratches right here on my arm. And you can know. Yeah, there, there's scratches. And Pecky 
is a very jumpy one. They're not as jumpy as the leghorns, but she is still pretty jumpy. She like jumps a lot. So, and we can tell that she's pecky and under her wings, you can't see them. She has two brown stripes under her wings. So if I move my little cheeky thing, you can see that brown stripe right there. That is how you can kind of tell Pecky. And um, you can also tell Pecky from Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong's like full on brown, but Pecky, she's pretty white. She has a little bit of brown on top, but you know, she's still a little white. So, um, so her claws are getting very long now, and she is going to be very big. That's right, they are going to be big. And I put Guess what I like doing with the chickens? I like, like, doing this under their beaks and lifting my finger up kind of like that. Putting them under their chins? Yeah, like this. Yeah. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, I just did it. I finally did it after she stopped moving her head. So I'm gonna put her back. Yeah, I'm just gonna show. Let's see if we show the wings. You wanna show your wings, Pecky? Gently. All right, so we got. That's all right. It's okay. So she got tail feathers. She got very long wings. Little tail feathers. They cannot. And see. she's brave. She's definitely brave. There you go. Yeah, that's how you can tell she's brave. Now, who else we got you want to see? We have Donkey Kong down here. Hey, where's Donkey Kong? Uh, we can see you right on the side of the screen. So yeah, so if you can see in the background they're using the, uh, the mother hen brooder heater as a poop station. Uh -huh. This one in particular has a flat top design instead mm -hmm. of some of them that have the angled tops. And uh, as a result, now that they're big enough to get up there, they, they spend more time on top of it than they do underneath it. So that's why that's, that's going to be coming out. Um, the heater is going to be coming out of the box. And uh, I'd say probably in a week or less, we'll move these guys out into the chicken coop. Alright, so anything else before we sign off? Um, I hope that it's less than a week because I cannot no, wait to see on your shoulders. And, um, who's on your and Mario is up on my mommy's shoulder. That's right. Mm -hmm. So one thing, if they're up on your shoulder, make sure you don't look at them, afraid they pick your eye. Yeah, and yeah. watch out. You don't want to test your luck with them too much up on your shoulder because they could poop on it. <laughs> That's right. They could drop a doo-doo on your shoulder. And you got to be careful with chickens. Yeah. Because um, they got on my head once. They could go like... I bet you could yeah. this one off my yeah. shoulder. They could okay, go like... So I'm just going to take this. And they could go like jack the box. There we are. Bye. Peace.